All right, the role of insulin. How does it actually drive these nutrients into your cells? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we know that insulin has a general function of causing things to enter the cell, uh, whether it be an amino acid or a sugar or a uh, fatty acid. It has this uh, the storing effect. It causes anabolism or the anabolic effect of building things, uh, glyco glyc glycogenesis, uh, lipogenesis, proteogenesis, all those things occur because of insulin. Insulin is driving things into the cells. Well, we're going to take a look at how, what goes on, how's them, what receptors are involved, what chain of events or cascades are involved that, um, that as it occurs as a result of insulin uh, and, and what it does and, and it being released into the bloodstream. So we're going to use this animation here and take a look at it and get into the, the mechanism of insulin, uh, insulin uh, function. This is Mark from the MSOE Center for Biomolecular Modeling. The following animation will show the molecular mechanism whereby insulin triggers the uptake of glucose from your bloodstream. Soon after a meal, the digestive system begins to break down the food you have eaten. The carbohydrates in this food are broken down into a simple sugar called glucose. As this glucose is absorbed from your digestive system into your bloodstream, your blood sugar levels increase. Your circulatory system then carries the glucose to muscle cells throughout your body. Where okay, so time out. Basically, we're continuing on where we left off from the digestive tract. Yeah, through the process of digestion and the involvement of all the different enzymes, uh, the amylases, proteases, and, and peptidases, uh, your lipases, and all that stuff, they're all broken down and reduced down to their individual monomer so that they can cross cell boundaries and get, eventually get in the bloodstream be delivered and then cross more cell boundaries uh, using those different methods of transport, whether it be facilitated diffusion, having to bind to a receptor and pass through requiring no energy going from areas of high amounts to low amounts, whether it be active transport, having to, requiring the, the addition of ATP energy, chemical energy, plus a, a protein to carry it across and be able to move from low to high concentrations or whether it's just passive diffusion where it can slip right between the, the phospholipids or just pass through it like an open tunnel uh, that, would, that would allow things through but again requires no energy all right so uh, we're continuing the saga so food is in the bloodstream it's being delivered to the muscle tissues here and now we're going to take a look at what insulin does once it, once the uh, food is detected and present and uh, and what happens it is used to generate energy. And here's the important part. In order to get that glucose that's now in your bloodstream into your muscle cells, you need to have insulin present to trigger that uptake event. Insulin is a small protein hormone produced by your pancreas. Okay, quick review. Protein hormone means made of amino acids, which means it's polar, which means it has a slight charge, which means it cannot pass through the membrane without uh, the aid of a protein. Uh, and but I'm saying this isn't a substance that's going to be entering. This is a hormone. It's a signal that, that elicits change or stimulates a, a cascade of events. So this thing is going to intersect its its receptor on the cell membrane surface because it cannot travel into the cell and bind with its receptor. Whereas a steroid hormone, which is nonpolar and small enough, it can slip right between the phospholipids. Uh, passively uh, through diffusion and before and then actually connect with its receptor within the cell within the cell nucleus all right so again just a quick reminder of the difference between uh, peptide or protein hormone signaling and steroid hormone signaling and it all depends on polarity nonpolarity and where the receptor is going to be found as the concentration of glucose in your bloodstream rises your pancreas senses this increase and is stimulated to release insulin into the bloodstream the newly released insulin plays a key role in regulating the concentration of glucose in your blood, a process known as glucose homeostasis. The insulin that is now released into your bloodstream binds to the extracellular domain of receptor proteins found on the surface of liver, muscle, and fat cells. There again, uh, highlighting the three t types of tissues where, where uh, insulin receptors are found. These receptors you're, we're taking a look at in this model can be found on muscle tissue, skeletal muscle tissue. It can be found on uh, in fat tissue, adipose tissue, uh, and it's also found in liver cells. So this process we're taking, getting ready to take a look at, 
uh, occurs in all three of those tissues when insulin is present and is, or as a result of uh, glucose or amino acids and things like that in the bloodstream. So we've got this receptor. Uh, it's a protein. It's shape specific. will only match with that hormone uh, due to its uh, molecular shape. If it's a different shape, it won't be recognized and it won't set off this cascade of events we're getting ready to take a look at. So out here is the blood where the glucose is, and here's the cell where we want the glucose to go. This binding triggers the autophosphorylation of the intracellular domains. Whoa, time out. Autophosphorylation. Phosphorylation just means a phosphate group, one of those functional groups we learned about way back uh, earlier in this unit, has been added to something. You can see it's represented by this little P right here. Those are phosphate groups, and you got to start equating. Phosphorylation means adding phosphates, and adding phosphates is the same as saying we added energy to it. And energy activates. So phosphorylation, adding phosphates, adding energy, activating kick-starting something, getting it going. So when this insulin uh, hormone binds with the receptor, it causes a chemical signal to go through and in an attempt to be to uh, maintain simplicity, because uh, this is complex enough, they removed a lot of the enzymes that are involved. There are kinases, which are groups of enzymes that control phosphorylation, adding phosphates to things, adding energy to things, adding uh, activating things. They will bring this thing along and actually add the phosphates to it, but they don't show that because, again, it's, it's hairy enough as is without having to add all that stuff to it. So anyway, this binds. Uh, phosphorylation occurs automatically, and watch this. Which, in turn, phosphorylate a specific substrate signaling protein. Again, they look like an egg on this, but really it's going to have a shape-specific dependence. It's going to bind there, and watch what happens to it. This protein then phosphorylates. Boom, phosphorylation. And now it's going to go over and it's going to start a chain of events here. This is called a cascade. Other downhill signaling proteins, leading to an amplification of the signal at each step. All right, amplification. As you can see, amplification just means to increase or get stronger. So this one was, this when insulin bound, it, it caused this to be phosphorylated, which caused this protein to become phosphorylated, which then activated these two, and these two each activated these two, and then these all activated two of their own. So you can see the signal, the phosphoryl phosphorylation signal, is getting stronger and stronger because just by sheer numbers. All right, so. Uh, and that all occurred just because this insulin bound with that one receptor. Now understand, your cells have multiple, many, 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 uh, maybe hundreds of uh, insulin receptors all along the cell surface. So and every time one of these things binds to the receptor, this chain of events occurs in every, in, uh, as a result of every binding. This overall signaling process is known as a signal transduction cascade. In other words, transduce means to send or pass along, so it's a signal transduction cascade chain of, of reactions uh, where they're passing a chemical signal, this phosphorylation along, and pay attention. What's coming up next is the whole purpose. It's going to highlight one of these things. But understand, there's about eight of them, I think, that had this here, and so every single one of these will do the same thing that they're getting ready to show this one does. One important consequence of this signal cascade is the movement of glucose transport proteins called glutes towards the cell surface. Time out. Big key factor here, key information. The, that whole cascade there had to occur so that these things, these are things that are called glute transporters, G-L-U-T, uh, and it causes them to move to the surface. And in other words, it's called expression or glute expression. These little transport channels right here uh, are all inside the cell right now. They're not on the surface where they, where the, where they can be used. And they have to be activated and then caused to be moved up to the surface and show up so that they can uh, I'll start allowing glucose and other macromolecules like amino acids to come into the cell. As these storage vesicles... Boom! Activation. All right, Activation, these things are going to start moving up here and all these transport proteins are going to become usable now. Fuse with the cell membrane, the number of glutes present on the surface of the cells increase allowing the glucose to enter the cell. As a result, the glucose concentration in the bloodstream decreases. The glucose is now inside the cell, where it can be metabolized to generate the energy in the form of ATP that it... 
Okay, so that's basically what insulin does. Insulin is not necessarily the doorway itself. It's just the key to the doorway. If insulin doesn't bind with the receptor, it never sets off that signal transduction cascade, which, and again, every single one of those at the very end will all go and activate a different, like its own separate uh, glute transporters, and they all move to the surface, open up the doorway, and allow the glucose and uh, other macronutrients into the cells that they, uh, they are a part of. So, yeah. Insulin's role, it does remove sugar and amino acids and things in the cells, but this is how it does it. Uh, so again, I hope this helped. Uh, use this, uh, and I'll see you guys in class. If you have questions, let me know.